Hi, I'm Keely from Gears 3G3V. We've noticed that there is a lot of confusion about the skills challenge rules for Vex over under. We're hoping this video will clarify the skills rules for teams, coaches, and volunteers. The first steps for skills is to get the field set up. For skills, 56 green tri balls are available, 12 on the field and 44 match loads, and 2 red tri balls for preloads. Blue tri balls are not used in skills. Set the field up using the field diagram provided by the REC Foundation. Please know that this is different than the regular competition field setup. Drive team members may reposition the tri balls that start in the match load zones. A side note for event partners. There is no rule about how to contain the match load tri balls for skills, but we recommend splitting the tri balls among two baskets. Remember that for skills, if you have a metal field, you are required to have GPS tapes on the field perimeters. If you are using a plastic portable field like this one, the GPS strip is already built in. Now that your field is set up, it's time for teams to run their autonomous coding skills or driving skills matches. As a scorekeeper rep, you want to make sure and ask the team if they are doing driving skills or autonomous skills so you can choose the correct option in your scoring program. The robot can be placed in any of the starting positions that are allowed in matches, either on the red side or the blue side. But drive team members must stay in the red alliance station at all times. That means they cannot stand beyond the edge of the walls and kneel to the side of the field outside of the alliance station to match load. The two red tribals can be used as preloads or match loads. If a team uses them as preloads, one must be touching the robot, while the other must be placed in a non-scored position in the blue offensive zone, not touching the robot. However, you can use just one preload and then use the other as a match load, or you can use both as match loads. If a team plans to ask for a stop time, they need to inform the skills ref before the match starts, and let the ref know what their cue will be to stop the match. If a team does not let the scorekeeper referee know ahead of time, the ref is not required to record the stop time. Next, team members should plug their remotes into the field control system and make sure their safety glasses are on. Then they are ready to start their match. The ref should confirm they are ready and count down to start the skills run. Regarding match loading, batch loads can either be placed in the match load zone or placed gently onto the robot. Gently placing match loads on a robot so that it rolls down the robot is an acceptable form of match loading, though actions such as throwing or rolling the tri balls is not acceptable. The robot must be touching the tile inside the match load zone or the match load bar in order to match load into the robot. Momentary accidental loss of contact with the match load zone or match load bar is allowed as long as the robot is still breaking the plane of the inside edge of the match load bar. Match load tri balls should be presented one at a time. According to Q&A number 1778, that means that any interaction where two tri balls are being held past the plane of the field wall at the same time is not acceptable. According to Q&A number 1777, a robot design which requires repeatedly reaching further than one field tile away from the match load zone is illegal. This is where it might get a little bit confusing. According to Q&A number 1778, match loads can still be placed on a robot that is possessing a tri ball from a non-match load maneuver. For example, a robot that has control of a tri ball in their intake when it arrives at the match load station can have a match load placed on a rapid fire catapult. Since the match load is only being placed on the robot momentarily, the match loaded tri ball does not meet the definition of controlled or possessed. A robot can only possess one tri ball at a time. A tri ball is considered in possession if the robot's change in direction would result in a controlled movement of the tri ball, which usually means one of two things. Either the tri ball is fully supported by the robot, or the tri ball is moved by the robot in a preferred direction with a concave face of the robot. Robots in possession of more than one tri ball must immediately stop all robot actions except for attempting to remove the excess tri balls. 
According to Q&A number 1523, if a robot scores in a skills match while possessing more than one tribal, the team is disqualified and receives a score of zero. Although, if the robot is able to reverse the scoring action, the referee can count it as a minor violation and record the match as scored. Repeated minor violations may result in a DQ at the referee's discretion, resulting in a score of zero for the match. Plowing is different from possession. A robot is considered to be plowing tribals if the robot is moving them in a preferred direction with a flat or convex face of the robot. It is legal for a robot to plow multiple tribals at once. Robots may use either elevation bar. For elevation to count, the robot cannot be touching the field perimeter. Tribals that land on the red goal should not be removed by a student or referee. A drive team member may remove tribals that have come to rest on the top of the blue goal. Rule RSC4 states that rule SG8 does not apply for skills matches. This means that a robot is allowed to enter either alliance goal in a skills match. The rules for scoring a skills match are as follows. Five points for green or red tribals that are placed in the red goal as long as at least two corners of the tribal are in the plane of the goal and they are not being touched by the robot. Red tribals in the blue goal also score five points. Green or red tribals that are in the red offensive zone are scored as two points as long as a robot is not touching them. That includes tribals that are touching the match loading bar as long as they are touching a tile in the red offensive zone. For elevating, you receive between 5 and 20 points based on what tier you are elevated. The robot must stay elevated after the field comes to rest in order for it to be scored. If an elevated robot is touching a tri-ball, it is still considered elevated, but the tri-ball is not scored. To understand elevation, please read the definition of elevated in the game-specific definitions in the game manual. To clarify further, here is a list of tribals in elevation that should not score points. Green tribals that are on the blue side should not receive any points, whether they are in the blue goal or the blue zone. Red tribals in the blue offensive zone are also not scored. Tribals in the match loading zones are not scored. A tribal that is touching both the red and blue offensive zone is not scored. If a robot is touching a tribal, that tribal should re be removed and is not scored. And an elevated robot does not receive points if it is touching the field perimeter or the yellow elevation bar cap. If you'd like to read all of the Robot Skills Challenge rules, or need help falling asleep, if you haven't already, the rules can be found in Appendix B of the Over Under Game Manual. Teams, best of luck as you finish out the over-under season. Coaches and volunteers, our sincerest thanks for all you give to make VEX an awesome experience for the students you serve.